Jobs in industries that don't exist now, but will 10 years in the future. That's what I'm gonna be talking about today. This was something I stumbled upon the other day and I knew about this, but I didn't realize how many people were really passionate about it. There is a subreddit called r slash futurology. And this is basically about the speculation of future economies, technologies, civilizations, etc. Basically, they are trying to figure out the direction that humanity is headed and how fast we're going to get there. Now, they have a bunch of very interesting threads on there. Some of them are kind of personal finance related. A lot of them aren't, but yeah, that is what inspired me to make this video. And if you think about it, this is incredibly important. You know, a thousand years ago, most people in the world would be born into villages and small tribes. And if your dad was a fisherman and you were born a boy, you were gonna be a fisherman and your son was gonna be a fisherman and the grandson and the great grandson and the great, great, great grandson all the way like 20, 30, 40 generations. Then in the last 150 years or so, we graduated to the point where if you were born into a fisherman's family, maybe you could go and become a blacksmith or a soldier or something else. And that's great. And that's basically transitioning from this first very primitive type of job market to a second job market where you have a lot more choice. Well, what I believe we're transitioning transitioning to is a third job market where let's say your dad is a fisherman and you were born to them you're likely going to end up doing a career that doesn't even exist yet because many careers that exist right now are going to get phased out through automation as well as streamlining of processes and technology has been advancing so fast that people companies and the economy can barely even keep up with it so that's what this video is going to be about careers jobs and industries that don't necessarily exist right now but they likely will 10 years in the future. And also I'm gonna be going over how you can prepare yourself and maybe if you have kids, your kids for the changing job market. But before we get into that, make sure to gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. This is kind of a different type of video than what I usually do. So if you guys like it, let me know. Let's aim for 2000 likes on this video. So voice command has gotten more and more popular. A lot of people have Siri, they've got Google, they've got all kinds of different things like Alexa from Amazon. And what most people don't realize is a lot of these can actually be programmed to control pretty much all of the electronics in your home. Alexa, unplug Wi-Fi. Now this could be as simple as simply just telling your home to turn the lights on all the way to in the very near future, telling a automated robot to fix breakfast for you. However, a lot of people have trouble simply even just like setting up their TV, right? Setting up the TV a lot of the time requires somebody to come in or at least somebody to be on the phone to help you get it started. So if you think people are going to be able to easily set up these home automation systems, which are going to be rapidly developing and getting better and better, then chances are, unless you're like a genius or you're really good at it, you're gonna have a lot of trouble doing it. Now these systems are not only extremely convenient, but they can also be used to save a ridiculous amount of time. I mean, think about it. If there's a robot that washed your clothes and cooked for you, uh, all these things that take up a lot of your time, think about all the things you could do with that time. So having somebody come in and help you to set up these systems and tailor them to the individual, that's gonna be a central theme here that I think is gonna be huge, is specialization and optimization tailoring systems to individuals for their individual needs is going to be huge. So yeah, that is definitely gonna be a job. It's basically gonna be like a technician type job where you go in almost like a technician slash consultant. You figure out what the person's needs are and then you figure out exactly you know what tools can get those done and then you give them those tools, show them how to use them and there you go. The next job that I think is going to exist in 10 years is going to be a medical mentor. And this is somebody who's basically going to work with your doctor, nurse, physician, et cetera, and make sure that you are following up on what their recommendations are. I work in healthcare and one of the biggest problems you see over and over again, you know, the patient and the doctor, they get rushed through like a meeting, the doctor's gotta, you know, do it really fast, 15 minutes. The doctor tells the patient something, but the, it just, for whatever reason, they don't remember it. Maybe they're taking the medication wrong, maybe they're not following through, maybe they don't change their diet, they're not exercising, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many different things. And so what a medical mentor would do is they would read the notes from the doctor visit, 
uh, you know, figure out what the doctor's suggestions were, and then follow up with the patient to make sure that they're properly doing it and they're comfortable with everything that the doctor suggested. Now, on top of that, I believe that medical care is going to be extremely specialized. And by specialized, I mean it's going to be personalized for every single person that the doctor takes care of. This is already sort of starting, but it really hasn't caught on very much. Uh, pharmacogenomics is basically where you look at a patient's DNA, and that is able to tell you, in many cases, what therapies are going to be best for that patient. So on a very simple level, you know, medication A versus medication B, patients who have certain genes, maybe medication A will work better for them, and there's no need for them to even try medication B. That's gonna save a lot of cost, it's gonna save a lot of time waste, and potentially adverse events as well. And it goes beyond medications. A lot of the time, diets are that way as well. A person with a certain genetic makeup, maybe this type of diet works really well for them, or maybe, you know, it doesn't really matter the diet, it just matters how long they eat during the day, so things like intermittent fasting, and then for another patient, you know, they really do have to stick to a strict type of diet if they want to maximize their lifespan. So yeah, I believe this is another profession that's going to pop up and it's going to be big. Along the same lines, this is gonna be the next one. I'm gonna call this one a genetic specialist. This is also going to be in healthcare, and this might be a little bit further down the line. I think we're gonna start doing it uh, relatively soon. Um, we've got uh, this technology coming out called CRISPR, and CRISPR is essentially a gene editing tool. And I'm sure you can imagine all the implications of this. Uh, there's you know, potentially some bad things that could happen, but there's also a lot of upside as well. So for instance, if someone is born with a predisposition to have breast cancer, you can use the gene editing tool, especially when they're young, it'll probably work even better when they're young, to take out that gene. And there's actually been movies that have taken this to the extreme. There's a movie called Gattaca, for instance, really good movie actually, uh, where almost everyone is basically born perfect. So they're all born like tall, handsome, uh, perfect health, super athletic, genius IQ, etc. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be that extreme, but there are definitely some practical uses. The next one on the list is going to be a human technology integration specialist. And this is basically going to be geared specifically towards work life where you can actually use technology in order to make yourself more effective and more efficient. So an example of this a few years ago when they had that experiment where they came out with the Google Glass, didn't really catch on, but basically, um, you know, the implications of the Google Glass and what you can actually do with it are incredible. So one really obvious example, uh, anyone in the medical field will know that what I'm saying is absolutely true. A lot of the time when it comes to medical school, pharmacy school, nursing school, PA school, NP school, etc., a lot of it is just blunt force memorization. It is a ridiculous amount of memorization. What if instead of focusing on memorizing stuff, which is honestly a little bit archaic in my opinion, I mean, I know there's some stuff you absolutely have to memorize, but a lot of the stuff you memorize, you just end up forgetting right after your test. What if instead of medical schools and pharmacy schools focusing on that, they were able to focus on problem solving instead? using information that you can easily access with something like a Google Glass immediately, and then you know using that information to solve complex problems. That would, in my opinion, really improve medical care, and patient outcomes would be much better, people would be living longer, more people would be living, etc. Now, it'd have to get to the point where the Google Glass essentially is reading your mind, so you, you, know, you wouldn't be like blinking or anything to open stuff, it would literally just be like, you're thinking, okay, I need to know what the first line, the second line treatment, and the third line treatment is for, for this disease or something along those lines. I also need to automatically look up what the stats are for the latest studies, and the Google Glass would just open that in front of your eyes. So yeah, it would definitely be incredibly valuable and it would make things a lot better. The next one on the list, kind of steering away from medical stuff, and there's a lot of awesome medical stuff, but the next one on the list is going to be food engineer. And this would basically be someone who has a background in chemistry and biology, but specifically, they would be an expert in 3D printing food. Now, not only would this make your food potentially look a lot better and more appealing, but on top of that, it would be more efficient, it would taste better, and it could also be healthier. Another one that I thought was really interesting was a personal web manager. And this is essentially a PR person, so a public relations person, 
but for individuals, right? So, you know, in the age of cancel culture, everybody's like getting canceled for a tweet that they made when they were like 11 years old. Totally ridiculous, but you know, personal web manager, you would maybe hire them as a consultant, something like that. They'd go through all of your past posts and they'd tell you, hey, you need to delete this, you need to delete this, you need to delete that, etc. So they would basically make sure that your reputation stays really good online. This is something that would be pretty difficult to automate with a robot, and so you likely would have to hire someone to manually go through your past accounts and do it for you. So automation and the streamlining of processes are going to be disrupting pretty much every industry out there, and they are going to be replacing millions, maybe even hundreds of millions of jobs in the United States alone. However, these robots are going to need technicians that work on them. Steve Starf, I am above this, snarf, snarf. They are going to inspect the robots, do maintenance. They are going to repair them when they break down. They're also going to help engineers and other professionals out on how they can make the robots more efficient. This is basically gonna be somebody who makes sure that drones are operating the way they should be. So there's so many different uses for drones in the future. One really obvious one, you know, Amazon for instance, they've got like the one to two day shipping, which is amazing. Everyone thinks that's awesome. Well, maybe 10 years from now, one to two day shipping is going to be really, really slow because you might be able to order something on a drone, right? So you would order something on a drone, it would be at the store where you need it, and five minutes later, it drops it off on your doorstep. So in the future, Karens across the United States might be complaining. I'm gonna need to speak to your manager. Because of the fact that they had to wait a whole 12 hours to get their new makeup or whatever they ordered on Amazon. So these are basically going to be people who try to monetize idle assets, right? So assets that aren't moving, aren't doing anything, aren't producing, and you basically want to take advantage of that and monetize them. So an example of this on a business level is let's say you have a big office building and you know you're taking up like 80% of it. Well, excess capacity broker would be somebody who would maybe try to rent out the other 20% for some type of conference or something like that, maybe storage, like a warehouse. And so instead of that area basically just going to waste, you would end up making some money from it. Another example of this is, you know, let's say you've got an extra bedroom in your house and you wanna rent it out on Airbnb, but you don't necessarily want to do it yourself. Well, excess capacity broker might come in there, you pay them a certain amount and they will take care of everything else. They'll rent the room out for you and they'll pretty much automate everything. So yeah, those are just a few ideas that I had, a few things that I thought were really cool that popped up that I definitely think are likely going to happen in the next 10 years or so. Let me know some of your ideas down in the comments below. Uh, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, gently tap the like button and hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.